What's up everybody, my name is Eddie, welcome to my channel. Today is October 7th. I'll be traveling to South Korea tomorrow from Colorado. And I just wanted to make a quick video showing you guys what it's like traveling to South Korea right now during the pandemic. Also wanted to give you guys a few tips and things to think about before your travel and show you guys exactly what you should expect during your travel. Other than that, I'm honestly not 100% sure what to expect myself. So I'll get to Korea and we'll talk there. Peace. guys what's up so we are finally here in korea it is the next day after we arrived i just want to start off by saying you're going to hear me say we a lot in this video and by we i'm talking about my best friend and i we actually traveled here together anyways let's get into the most important part of the video so i want to break it down into three different parts one before the trip two the plane ride of the trip and three arriving so before your trip you want to decide where you're going to stay at for your 14 day quarantine in korea if you're a resident of korea obviously staying at home is going to be the easiest and probably most convenient thing to do if you're just visiting like i am then your two other options are staying at a government facility hotel or an airbnb if you decide to do an airbnb like we did there are two things you want to note one, you want to contact your Airbnb host just to make sure it's all good that you do the 14-day quarantine there. Second, you're going to want to reserve a SIM card at krsim.com. This is important because this gives you a Korean phone number that you can use on your American phone or wherever you're coming from. And you can call your quarantine officer to schedule the COVID testing. They'll send you the results through that phone number. So it's just super important having a Korean phone number, especially if you're staying at an Airbnb and you need a way for people to contact you. And a pro tip before going on your trip, I would write down your seat number, passport number, airline number, and Airbnb contact info all on a sticky note and just bring that with you. All right, so now let's talk about the plane ride itself. So in the plane to Korea, they'll give you three forms to fill out. There's the health declaration form, travel record declaration form, and arrival card. On all three of these forms, you just need to put in the information I told you to write down on the sticky note. Okay, and so when you land, there are five steps upon arrival. In total, it takes about an hour to an hour and a half to get through all of this, but it's super easy and simple. All right, so the first step is the normal arrival gate. What you do is you give him your passport and the three forms you filled out on the airplane. He'll just put it in the system and then you're on to the next line. In the second line, they just make sure you have the correct apps downloaded for the self-quarantine. The name of the apps are Self-Quarantine Safety Protection App and Self-Diagnosis Mobile App. For the third step, after you download the apps and put in basic information, they're gonna call your Korean contact just to make sure that you know somebody here. I recommend using your Airbnb host contact info just so they could call them and make sure that you are actually staying with them. Also in the third step, they'll make sure all of the info on the app and your papers match and they'll give you a brief explanation on how to use the app. It's super simple. All you do is put in your temperature and if you have any symptoms, you jot that down. But if not, send and that's it. Okay, so in the fourth step, you just talk to someone very briefly. They tell you you need to take your temperature twice a day and tell you that you need to go get your COVID test within three days. From previous videos that I've seen, when you're at the airport, they'll give you something to take your body temperature with and record in the app at the airport. However, they aren't doing that anymore. So the only way you can get the device to actually take your own temperature is if you go to the testing facility. Another tip, if you arrive in Korea, in the morning or early afternoon, I definitely recommend going to get your COVID test right then and there. That way they give you all the stuff you need to go home and take your own temperature and you're all set. If not, then what you need to do is you need to go get your COVID test early the next day in order for them to give you the little thing for you to take your temperature with. The fifth and final step is the normal customs arrival desk there. You just give them your passport, whatever forms you have left. You take your fingerprints and a picture and you're all set. From there, you go on to baggage claim. After you get your bags and you leave the whole baggage claim area, then you get escorted to the transportation slash last stage of the entire process. Here, they just ask you where you're going and then they'll call you a taxi or either get you an airport shuttle to take you to your government facility. One more thing to note here, if you did reserve a SIM card, 
this is where you want to go pick it up. When you're waiting in line for your taxi or whatever, they're going to have you in a little blocked off area with just people who arrived. Right outside of the line where you're waiting for your taxi, there should be the place where you reserve your SIM card. What you want to do is you ask the quarantine officer if you can go pick up the SIM card right over there. So what I did was I just asked him, he let me out of the line and yeah, that was it. One more quick thing to note about the SIM card is it doesn't get activated right away. It only can get activated Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. So if you arrive late at night like we did, you're not going to have access to your Korean phone number until early the next day. This is a problem because you need a way to call a quarantine facility to schedule your COVID testing to get your body temperature thing. And this is why I recommend if you aren't a fluent Korean speaker, you should definitely stay at a government facility instead of doing an Airbnb. Just because you have to call so many different people to try to schedule your test, gotta get in contact with the taxi, all of that. So if you're not fluent in Korean, this may be a little bit difficult. The next day after we got our SIM card working, we called the quarantine officer. They had someone pick us up right in front of our Airbnb, took us to the testing area, we got the test and then they took us right back to the Airbnb. We didn't have to pay anything for that. And then they say they text you your results the next day. We haven't gotten that far yet. And one more thing they told us is one day before you check out, so on the 13th day of quarantine, you need to do one more test. So just make sure, I mean, you have nothing else to do, you're in quarantine, but just make sure the day before you leave, you have some time planned out for you to go get that final test. All right, what up guys? So quick update. When you go get your, they're gonna give you this little bag right here. In here, there's some sanitizer, a gel version, a spray bottle. They'll give you two masks, some trash bags where you throw everything away during your quarantine in here. And also, most importantly, the thermometers. So these are little paper thermometers. They're really cool. They give you four per person. They say you can use them up to five times each. All you do is you stick it in your mouth for a minute or under your armpit for three minutes. After that, these little dots will show up on here. It's kind of hard to see on the camera, but everything is explained on the little manual they give you. It's super easy and intuitive, so don't worry about that. Next, this is the survival kit that they send you. We got this three days after we arrived at our Airbnb. I'm sure if you stay at the government facility, they'll have these ready for you right when you get to your room. But in here, they just have some ramen, spam, some seaweed, tuna, rice, some curries. And also what I found super interesting are these packaged soups. So this company, they sell pretty much every type of Korean food you can think of in a package. I used to always stay away from these because I was just kind of weirded out by them. But being here for five days, this is what I've been living off of and maybe I can make a video showing you guys what this is like but this one in particular you feel full chicken legs in here and at first I was super grossed out too but they're actually pretty good so again maybe I can make a video on that in the future other than that though I think that's all I have for you guys so if you enjoyed the video or plan on going to Korea anytime soon and found this video helpful at all please leave a thumbs up below and I think going forward, this being my first video on YouTube, I'll do more daily vlog type videos. So if you're interested to see what else I got planned in Korea or even back home in the States, hit the subscribe button and I guess I'll see you later. Peace.